Montreal Canadiens fans, I know you want it. You want it so bad. You want the Kirby Doc. What happened video. But no, we are not doing that yet. Stay patient, my dear friends. It will come. But for now, we are talking about another player in the What Happened series. This is a little short summer-esque mini-series-ish where we go over to previous NHL entry drafts and we talk about player comparisons that were made by the NBC broadcast crew. Big shout out as always to Gurulus on Twitter who posted these screen caps from the past onto Twitter the other day and it's kind of the entire reason why we're making these videos. So big shout out over to Mr. or Mrs. Gurulus. Guru. But today, we're talking about yet another player taken in the 2018 NHL entry draft. Last time, it was Philip Zadina, the sixth overall sniper taken by the Detroit Red Wings that was compared back then in 2018 by NBC to Boston Bruins star winger David Pasternak. We went over the entire comparison where Zadina could go from here and how the comparison stacks up today, but we're talking about yet another player that was in that same draft, the player taken before Philip Zadina at fifth overall, and a player who was also compared to a star-studded Boston Bruin. We're going over the pick that pretty much threw a monkey wrench in the entire draft's top 10, because this pick pretty much allowed the Vancouver Canucks to get Quinn Hughes, it allowed the Oilers to get Evan Bouchard, it allowed everybody to kind of fall into place the way that they did. Today we're talking about the fifth overall pick by the Arizona Coyotes, Barrett Hayden. Now, Hayden was a really interesting name back in the 2018 NHL entry draft. Take a look at the season he had with the Sioux Greyhounds, and you can see that he wasn't really the biggest point producer on that squad. He had 60 points in 63 games played, and he was a point per game in the playoffs. Not bad seeing a guy go out there and produce the way he did, but to see him actually get taken fifth overall by Arizona, that was the intriguing part, especially when you remember that, hey, you had Philip Zadina, who was ranked a unanimous third overall, still on the board too. Barrett Hayden was a guy that if you take a look at his rankings, the highest ranking on here was actually 11th overall by TSN, Bob McKenzie, McKean's at 11, and Future Considerations all at 11. ISS had him at 12. Craig Button's list is not listed on this Elite Prospects analysis, but Button did have Hayden in his top seven, which was significant enough to the point that we actually made a video about that entire conversation back in 2018. I remember I was making this video before I had to go over to my graduation because I was a senior in high school in 2017-2018, but Barrett Hayden eventually did go top five. Why? Long story short, there were a few things that went in his favor. Firstly, the Arizona Coyotes were reaching for a center, and secondly, Barrett Hayton was the best one on the board in the eyes of most scouts. Thirdly, you had yourselves a scouting profile of the Sault Ste. Marie Greyhounds that said that guys like Barrett Hayton just did not get the right opportunity. You see, going over to the 17-18 squad, you can see that the number one player on the team in terms of points was none other than Philadelphia Flyers prospect Morgan Frost, who had almost two points a game on the year. Now, Frost was the first-line center, he played with Kachuk, he played with Gettinger. This was such a stacked line that they had all the power play minutes, they had all the even strength minutes, and as a result, second-line center Barrett Hayden did not really have an opportunity to shine in the same way that Frost did. This definitely was a point of contention, as he had some scouts going out there and saying, hey, if Hayden was just on a different OHL team, he likely would have had a lot more points, he likely would have been more scouted, and he likely would have been seen in a much higher tier than he was in the actual 2018 draft because he was playing as a second-line center the whole year. Okay, let's give the Arizona Coyotes the benefit of the doubt. Sure, they still reached for a guy that was projected to go outside the top 10, but the Montreal Canadiens two picks earlier had done the same thing when they selected Jesperi Kotkaniemi, who was seen by many as the top center of the 2018 draft. He kind of had this sentiment going around that the 2018 draft was one not really suited for centers if you're looking for top caliber guys. It was more suited for defensemen and for wingers. He had Andrei Svechnikov, Rasmus Dahlin at the top of the draft, not to mention Quinn Hughes, Adam Boquist, Evan Bouchard, all getting taken there as well. Noah Dobson is in that conversation additionally. And so... For Barrett Hayton, he was seen in a tier alongside of Kotkaniemi and Villeno as some of the top centers of the draft. Kotkaniemi, I remember, was very much compared to Anze Kopitar, Villeno was compared to Jonathan Taves, and then you had Barrett Hayton, whose comparison is quite shocking when you acknowledge that the last What Happened video also went over a 2018 prospect that was compared to a Boston Bruin. Barrett Hayton, back in 2017-18, was compared not only by NBC, but by many scouts in general 
to Patrice Bergeron. Now, okay, Bergeron is definitely not in the same era that Barrett Hayden was from. Hayden was drafted in 2018, Bergeron was drafted all the way back in 2003. Second round, 45th overall by the Boston Bruins. The difference is, though, Bergeron eventually became probably the best defensive center the NHL has ever seen. And if you take a look at the body of work that he's had, sure, while his career high in points in a season is 79, that in which he accomplished in 65 games in 2018-19, which is a crazy high point per game, by the way, you still have yourselves a guy who went out there and won as many Selkies as he did. He won the Selkie in 2012. He won the Selkie in 2014. He won the Selkie in 2015. He won the Selkie in 2017 and in 2022. He's a boss. So good defensively, so good on the draws, he just knows what to do, he can penalty kill, and Barrett Hayden back in his OHL days was seen as a really similar type of molded player to Patrice Bergeron for the Sioux Greyhounds. Now, admittedly, it might sound ridiculous when you take a look at where Hayden is today to see that comparison made, but I could honestly see it back when I watched some Sioux Greyhounds footage in that time frame. There was such a good, calming, two-way center presence as a second-line guy that Hayden had that I could understand the way this comparison was made, it's just now, a few years down the line, it's difficult to really see how that ever came to fruition. Because Patrice Bergeron, after getting drafted in 2002-2003, he made the Boston Bruins immediately after getting 39 points in 71 games played. Barrett Hayton spent his draft plus one season in the Sioux Greyhound system once again, where he was a dominant center, the captain of the Greyhounds, and he had 66 points in 39 games played. His first full season, though, came in 2019-20, where he had 20 games, 4 points for the Arizona Coyotes, and 12 points for 7 games for Team Canada at the World Juniors. If you take a look at Patrice Bergeron's second season, after getting drafted, he actually went back to Providence because, yeah, lockout, nothing really happened that season. But Bergeron's draft plus 3 year going back to the NHL was astounding. The guy had an 81-point year. 31 goals, 42 assists, 73 total freaking points in 05-06. Barrett Hayton's draft plus three year is absolutely not in that territory in the slightest. The guy had 10 points in 26 games at the AHL level and three points in 14 games with the Arizona Coyotes. Now, sure, this recent season, he actually kind of came into his own a little bit more. He had 24 points in 60 games played, 10 goals, 14 assists for the regular Arizona Coyotes, but again... This comparison with Patrice Bergeron is so completely out of the water now that it's kind of laughable to even consider that this could be the potential here. Barrett Hayden is going to really need to explode over the next few seasons and fast if he wants to get to that status that Patrice Bergeron has established for himself. However, I will go out there and say that for what he is, Barrett Hayden... I mean, he was supposed to be drafted as a first-line caliber center. I always kind of saw him as a top-six caliber guy. You have yourselves Logan Cooley in the system that is probably going to max out as an elite caliber center if everything goes right. You have some other players in the system, too, that can probably help you out long-term, like whoever the heck it is you draft next season, Connor Bedard, Matvey Mishkov, whatever. Barrett Hayden, as long as he stays the course and develops the way that he continues to develop because he is 22 years old, as long as he shows a little bit more of an eagerness when he has the puck, as long as he shows a little bit more comfort in the offensive zone, and as long as he actually develops still, you probably are looking at a middle six caliber center that can play some PK here and there, and that probably can max out at, let's say... 40, 45 points. I'd be surprised if he ever hits 50 in a season, to be honest, based off of how his development has gone so far. But then again, I was a lot more optimistic on Hayden back in 2018 as well because of the Craig Button list and because of his performance in the Sioux. So either way, you can talk in the comments all your thoughts about Barrett Hayden and the Patrice Bergeron comparison that was given out to him. Bergeron became a 70-point player in the blink of an eye, so it's really difficult to say that anybody's going to go out there and become Bergeron, but if Barrett Hayden can round out the rest of his game, really round out the defensive side and penalty-killing side that really put him on the map in the first place back in 2017-18, then I think the Arizona Coyotes have themselves a good player. But of course, you're going to have to re-sign the guy first because at the time of recording this audio, July 4th, 14, 12, 20 a.m. in the morning. He still is an RFA who needs a contract, so we'll see where that goes in the future. Talk in the comments, though, all your thoughts. I hope you enjoyed this video. Rolls 99. And bye.